600 million years ago, this is what the world looked like as Gondwana land. Through tectonic processes and periods of orogeny and sedimentation, New Zealand has evolved from this landmass. The first phase, which started 600 million years ago, was the Tahua sedimentation. This was when the New Zealand landmass was off the coast of Gondwana and the area of New Zealand was pushed below sea level. The Tahua sedimentation was in a period of uplift where Gondwana collided with the New Zealand landmass and resulted in the formation of the Tallesi, Greywacki and Schist Mountains and also the formation of intrusive igneous rocks like granite through volcanic activity. The Rangitara sedimentation was in a second cycle of deposition where volcanic debris was deposited and New Zealand was once again submerged under the sea level. The Rangitara orogeny was a second collision and period of uplift against Gondwana. This caused uplift and folding of the Greywacki sandstone. 85 million years ago, Gondwana split. This opened up what we call today the Tasman Sea as New Zealand split away from Australia. After New Zealand split from Gondwana, there was a period of sedimentation and the New Zealand landmass sunk, known as the Kaikoura sedimentation and Oligocene drowning. Only the very tops of the mountain tops were above the water and this resulted in marine transgression and marine sediment was deposited into valleys. This has formed the limestone and calcareous deposits we see today. 25 million years ago, a new plate boundary formed between the Australian and Pacific plates, which we know as the Alpine Fault. This is an oblique convergent plate boundary and pressure from this has caused uplift of the grey wacky material to form the other southern Alps. The Enid Formation shows this marine transgression as New Zealand became once again a co continental landmass. These are the geological processes which have contributed to make New Zealand as we see it today. Brought to you by Zach, Sarah and Robin.